In our next lesson on Chapter 17, Lipid Metabolism, we want to consider fatty acid synthesis. Fatty acid synthesis begins with our substrate molecule, malonyl-CoA, and so our first goal is to produce this molecule. This is carried out by a reaction catalyzed by acetyl-CoA carboxylase. In other words, it's an enzyme that adds a carboxyl group to acetyl-CoA. In the first step, there's a biotin cofactor of this enzyme that becomes carboxylated. The carboxylate group comes from bicarbonate. So we have a carboxyl group attached to the biotin in order to form that bond that costs us a molecule of ATP. So there's ATP hydrolysis. Here's the energy cost, one ATP for every molecule of malonyl-CoA that we form. In the second step, the carboxyl group is transferred from that biotin cofactor to acetyl-CoA and we thereby form malonyl-CoA and regenerate the original form of the biotin cofactor. Now we're ready to actually begin fatty acid synthesis. This process is carried out, believe it or not, by a single polypeptide. Fatty acid synthase, the most impressive of all enzymes. One, enz one gene encodes one polypeptide that is actually seven enzymes. The protein is a homodimer, six active sites per polypeptide, that's 12 per dimer, and the size is 540 kilodaltons. It's huge. The benefits of having all of these enzyme activities in a single polypeptide chain is that the product of one reaction can quickly diffuse to the next active site so that the process overall can be very rapid. Here we have the ribbon diagram of this rather impressive enzyme and it's color coded according to the domains and those are illustrated at the top of the screen here. Keep in mind these are all just separate domains on a single polypeptide chain. In our first step of fatty acid synthesis we're simply going to load the substrates onto the enzyme. Our substrates are malonyl-CoA and acetyl-CoA in our first round. We have acetyl-CoA as our donor. That acetyl group is going to be transferred from coenzyme A to a cysteine side chain on the enzyme. And the malonyl group is going to be transferred from malonyl-CoA to that acyl carrier protein. You'll notice that in each case we simply exchanged thioester bonds. We broke the thioester bond on acetyl-CoA and reformed it on that cysteine side chain. We broke the malonyl-CoA thioester bond and reformed it on acyl carrier protein. So there's no net change of energy here. Both have a thioester link to the enzyme. Now we're really ready to condense these two molecules. Our goal is to form an even numbered chain and so we're actually only going to condense two acetyl groups. That carboxyl group is going to come off. Decarboxylation of malonyl allows that carbon number two to attack the carbonyl carbon on the acetyl group and thereby add it to that chain that's growing on acyl carrier protein. So here we've decarboxylated and we've lengthened our chain. We've got an even numbered four carbon chain. And here's our cysteine side chain that's been reduced to sulfhydryl. This is why we added that CO2 in the first step, uh, catalyzed by acetyl-CoA carboxylase, so that we could condense these two molecules and chemically make it happen by using that CO2 as a good leaving group. So here we're starting our process. We formed acetoacetyl ACP. The remainder of these steps are simply the reverse of beta oxidation. Remember in beta oxidation we started with a saturated chain, we unsaturated it, and then we created a carbonyl. We're going to reverse those steps here. We're starting with the carbonyl and we want to saturate the chain. So in our first step here, and that's illustrated as step four, we're going to first reduce the acetoacetyl to hydroxybutyryl. In other words, we're converting the carbonyl to a hydroxyl group and that's going to cost us a molecule of NADPH. Next we dehydrate to create that trans double bond and now we can saturate that bond 
by a reduction reaction, and here's our second cost of NADPH, and now we have a saturated 4-carbon chain. Again, attach that acyl carrier protein. In our next step to get ready for the next round, we're going to transfer that uh, growing acyl chain back onto the cysteine side chain and that leaves that acyl carrier protein free to pick up the next molecule of malonyl-CoA. Remember, for every round and every malonyl-CoA, there's an ATP cost. And we're going to go through the same rounds to lengthen that chain by two more carbon atoms. We're going to continue to do so until we form palmitoyl ACP. And then the final step is to use a thioesterase to clip off the palmitate fatty acid from that acyl carrier protein. The NADPH cost in carrying out fatty acid synthesis comes mostly from pentose phosphate pathway. And remember, that's present in all cells. So the cost of fatty acid synthesis to produce one molecule of palmitate, it costs us seven molecules of coenzyme A, and for each one of those, there's one ATP cost per malonyl-CoA. We also use two molecules of NADPH per round, that's 14 total, and that represents an energy of, uh, stored energy of about 35 ATP. So the total cost to make palmitate is roughly 42 ATPs. However, if we turned around and oxidized palmitate, we'd actually get more ATP out of it than what we put into it. In our next lesson on lipid metabolism, we want to see how we can generate longer chain fatty acids as well as unsaturate those chains. We also want to see how we can regulate fatty acid synthesis.